Hello everyone. I uh, want to share a tutorial on how to make planets like the ones that I made here uh, for my website which has been updated and is now a lot more fresh and clean and I just want to walk through that real quick for those who are subscribed to PWN Design whether as a site member or as a free member whichever one you choose. And I just want to walk through some changes here real quick and then we'll get on with the video. So this is a new welcome screen. You can now search for anything you want on the website. You just type in your search here, hit the search button or enter. It'll take you where you need to go. Uh, plans and pricing are now in one area where you can select either of the options here, which there are more options to come in the future and benefits will be changing. Um, but for now, this is where you can find them. Uh, next one is the subscription shop. This one's important because you can get everything if you are a subscriber of any of those two plans that are listed in there in the plans and pricing section you can download everything in here and anything that will be added for free so what you do is um, there's a price here but I can't set zero because of a limitation in the uh, program I'm using so uh, you click what you want and then uh, it has all the info here for you and everything then you just click add to cart and then when it's added to the cart you'll actually get the price reduced to zero now again uh, this is only for subscribers if you want to have these benefits where you can access all of the content we've created that is a premium content, uh, you have to have a subscription and then you can access everything. It is a large value, uh, over a couple thousand dollars worth of material in there. So if you want all of that, uh, as long as you are a subscriber to any of these two plans, you will have access to anything right now and in the future. As soon as you lose your subscription or you don't renew, um, then you won't have access anymore. So keep that in mind. Next is the tutorial options. In here we've actually changed the layout. So now we have everything in here by types. So we have Gaia tutorials and then we have Octane tutorials and discovering Geoglyph and then we're adding everything here as time goes by. These are YouTube videos but you can watch them here as, uh, as well as on YouTube. But in here you have everything uh, from the description to the time. I'll pause that. Um, and then you can just watch one and then move on to the next one and so on and so forth. It's really nice. And the other next big update is the update section here where we have our blog, which is now more easily accessible. Uh, if you want to look up anything from live stories, website updates, outspaced updates, or new content updates, you can here. Um, or you can search as well, which you just click on the magnifying glass and then put in your search term. Um, and then that's it. I will have a create post button because I am the admin. Uh, and that brings up one more thing. If you go to your profile on the website, everybody will now have a badge right here. And these badges just kind of help identify who you are. So uh, right now I'm an admin. So if I were to get onto like a form, when I finish building out the form that I have, uh, you'll know that I'm the admin. Everybody else will be either a PWNer or there are some people on there that have special badge uh, badges assigned to them for people who helped uh, get PWN to some milestones. So anyways, that is the quick and choppy uh, update to the website. Let's go ahead and start with the, the uh, tutorial. So first of all, if you go to solarsystemscope.com, uh, this is where you're going to get all the textures that you need for building out these planets. And they are all free. You can use them as you wish. Uh, I don't believe there's any limitations, however, I would always give credit to these guys for anything that you do. And so, uh, yeah, get, get the uh, textures that you want from here to follow along. Uh, the only thing that I am going to be showing really though is the earth clouds right here. Uh, just download either of these two options you need and then we'll call it good. Uh, I also recommend downloading their app and purchasing it. I did myself. It is really nice. It is, uh, it's quite fun to, to go around and look at the, the solar system with the kids. And they are not sponsoring this video, by the way. I just really like them. I don't have any sponsors, so you don't have to worry about that. Anyways, I have already created the planet that I'm going to be breaking down. And the reason why I already did that is because I knew I was going to have an intro for the website update, so I didn't want to keep you much longer than you already wanted to stay around. Uh, so I do thank you for sticking around. However, uh, we're just going to do a quick breakdown. So um, to begin, uh, if you didn't already set up your environment in Cinema 4D to kind of work with Octane a little bit easier, I recommend doing that, but in any case, you should be more familiar with using Octane if you are watching this video. So uh, we'll just kind of go along as we see fit. 
So the first thing I did is I created a sphere. Uh, you can just do it right there. This is the first one. I kept the uh, I kept it all defaults, but you can size it up to whatever you want. I set the segments to 200 just so it's round. And then I created three other ones. One will be a cloud holder that'll hold this cloud texture that you downloaded, and the other one will be the atmosphere holder, which will be used to hold the atmosphere right here. And this is a volume. Uh, so uh, to, to kind of go about showing you how to do this uh, I'm just gonna really just break it down so each one of these is going this is gonna be the regular size two meters that's just default but the cloud holder is gonna be slightly smaller or larger than the planet just so the clouds are floating in the air and then the atmosphere holder is gonna be slightly larger than the cloud layer just so the atmosphere is encompassing the clouds that's all you really need to do is just make this slightly larger than the original planet the next thing you're going to do is you're going to make a material, an octane material, whichever one you want. I used glossy, but all I did was I assigned a diffuse color, and then I put in a turbulence node for the bump that you see here, and that's it. I did nothing else except for change the specular and the roughness just so it wasn't super shiny, but still had a little bit of specularity to it. And then the next thing I did is I created another material, and this is another glossy material, and this is what's holding the clouds. So the diffuse is going to stay white. And if you wanted your clouds to be a different color, you just change the diffuse color. The next thing you do is you load the cloud map that you downloaded into the opacity channel. Um, and then I added that same uh, cloud map into the displacement, changed it to 8192 by 8192, uh, and then increased the height of it just a tad bit. And you can go a little bit higher on this as well, just depending on what you need. But obviously it's displacement, so the more you add, the more the clouds are going to show up. Just be careful, you don't want it to be over-encompassing your atmosphere. Um, and then uh, I added a turbulence node to the bump, just so when the clouds move across the planet, the bump changes and makes it look like the clouds are flowing in a different pattern. So uh, that's all you really do for those two materials. The next thing you do is you create your volume. So you create the volume. I just named it Atmosphere. And at first, what you're going to want to do as you're experimenting, especially if you have larger sized uh, uh, spheres for your planets, is increase the voxel size to something like uh, 50 or 100 or 500 or something, depending on the size. Because the larger the voxel size in the editor here, um, the, the quicker it will be the prototype your changes. And then when you're ready for your final render, you just lower it down to something that your system can handle. So I did one here. One gives me pretty good uh, return on, I guess, investment, I guess, where I wasn't sacrificing system speed uh, and risking a crash in Cinema 4D, but also maintaining really good detail. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to uh, medium. You're going to create a fog medium. And then change your absorption and scattering to something that you want, just whatever color you want. So if you wanted something really stark and contrasty, you could change that around. So let's do something like that. And then if you were to just not click on that, you can see how that's going to change the atmosphere. It's not as blue anymore. It's still a little blue, but not much. So we're just going to change this around a little. Dang it. A tiny bit more. So maybe more like this and now you can see that it's really red um, anyways you can change your atmosphere however you want and then change the scattering phase uh, I did point three here because I find that that gives you a really good amount of light that's being phased through the the volume where you can see it kind of wrap around and then disappear as it gets darker uh, if you wanted to you can you know play around with it a little bit more just so it's you know scattering a lot more you can see a lot more of your scattering color here uh, or you can do a negative I mean it really depends on what you want and what your needs are and you just play around with it so but I find that a point three is pretty good you can still see the atmosphere you can see it scattering inside of there and it looks pretty good uh, and then uh, the density I changed to a thousand just so it's really dense and then the volume step length is important because if you don't have a good volume step length, if you were to do a close-up shot of this planet, you would see your atmosphere and it would be really jaggy with the voxels. If you want that jagginess to go away, you just lower the step length. Just something lower. Uh, but be careful. Uh, it's just like the voxel size. The lower the, vol the, the lower the value, 
the harder it will be on your system to calculate. So just be mindful of that. And then uh, yeah, that's about all you really need to do to create this planet setup and its atmosphere. Now, if you want to be more accurate with your atmosphere, you can change the size of it to be even larger than, say, barely your clouds or your ground. So we'll do something like that. And you'll see the atmosphere increase in size. You also see that it gets a little bit more dense, uh, but um, it's fading out towards the edges, edges just a tad bit more, and it looks a little bit more uh, sci-fi-ish and planet-like. So the next thing is, is your light. Um, when you're ready to do your final render, uh, what I did is I just selected my planet and then created a octane targeted area light and that auto selected it for me so now every time I move my light it auto targets the planet so I don't have to worry about it always facing the planet it'll just do that on its own so I can just move this light around however I feel and it will always light the planet up exactly how I need it to and it's super simple so uh, if I take it further away from the planet, obviously it's not going to be as bright. So uh, you'll see a lot of that uh, atmosphere kind of fade away. Uh, but you want to get a good distance with your light to your planet so it looks good and you can still see the details, but you don't want it to be overblown. Another thing that you do is you select the uh, tag, the light tag for your octane light. Go to visibility and uncheck camera visibility and shadow visibility. The reason why is because if you didn't have that selected and your camera was or your light was in shot right here and if we go back and un dis and select this your light will show up and you don't want it to show up and then if you had multiple lights and say you had another scattering medium in here or like a volume medium in here just so you get some god rays coming out from your uh, planet from its main light source if you have this selected it'll cast shadows and you don't want it to cast shadows because it's a light source it's it should be doing its own thing it shouldn't be casting any shadows the solid object should so um, you can dis or deselect both of those and then if you want to take it one step further you can also just take down the general visibility and that should help clean it up quite a bit as well but that is the more important part of the light is just making sure that the camera visibility is not there so uh, with that said, the next thing is, is uh, go to your Octane settings, go to your post and select uh, the bloom or the post options and then increase the bloom to something high. Could be maybe not that high, like 200 maybe, which is good. And then you'll get this glow from your planet. You can increase the glare as well. And if you have the glare, obviously you're going to get these uh, rays coming off. So you can blur those quite a bit. Uh, you can change the ray amount so you don't get some weird looking like banding going on. Uh, and you can even change the spectral shift so you can find something that's a little bit more artistic and matches the planet like that. Maybe just decrease the amount. And then uh, you can call that good. You can also do a denoiser, enable the denoising, uh, enable the denoise on volumes. And then I just increase this all the way and don't touch anything else. Um, but that's really up to you. So everything else is just artistic, uh, just a choice of whatever you want to do. You can go through the custom LUTs. You can get some really cool looking LUTs going on. Like I think that one's pretty slick. Uh, and then you just have fun with it. That's all there is to it, really. It's just about having fun, really. Uh, so anyways, if you have any questions about this, maybe improvements that you can recommend, I'm always down for improvements. Uh, on any of these things and I like to share them with the community so really it's uh, I like to hear from you guys really because you guys are all the reason why I'm here um, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and you can rate comment and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one